Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm in San Carlo here in Manchester for a media lunch for Anthony Collar and Scott Coy with me. I've got trainer Joe Gallagher. Hello, Joe. Not by Coogan. Look, ready for a spot of lunch? <laughs> yeah, I'm starving. I think I was having no breakfast this morning, so I'm starving. Yeah, do good food here as well, mate. This is where we always come after the weigh-in for our pre-fight uh, uh, meal after the weigh-in. So, menu, food's good. Um, we're about, I don't know, 12, 11 days. 11 days away from uh, high stakes uh, next Saturday night. Um, first of all, just an update on obviously winding down the training now this week, I suppose, for Cleveland Crawler ahead of next week. Yeah, they had a um, huge sparring last week, heavy week last week. They had a big spa yesterday, and now they've got to start tapering down now. Uh, been really pleased with the sparring. Um, Scott Quick's flying, really pleased. Uh, we're just getting better and better with the sparring. We've got some really good sparring partners in, um, and Anthony Crawler as well. He's uh, was a bit first slow to get going at first, getting back into it. But then he's absolutely on fire two weeks ago, and uh, it was last night. So it's just holding Crawler. I wish Crawler's fight was this Saturday. Well, the pair of them already got this Saturday. Um, it's just holding them now. The, you'll see them later on. They're just absolutely oozing self confidence and self belief, and uh, both ready to go and do a number. Obviously, I remember like it only seemed like last week, but it was you know a couple of months ago now that you know we weren't sure whether Anthony was going to fight again, and obviously he was announced for this huge world title fight next week against Alice Perez, and um, you know he's ready in your opinion uh, to take this opportunity now, having you know suffered so much in the last six months and missing yeah. out against uh, Avril. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it was the right decision to have had Anthony do a warm up or something like that. I don't think I maybe might have got the, the right response from him coming back in a six or an eight rounder and I think the world title was it was so cruelly took away from him the opportunity uh, in the new year and fair play to Eddie yeah. and match room for uh, dipping their hands in the pocket and bringing Perez over and delivering Anthony Crawler another world title opportunity and uh, I think when something's been cruelly took away from you and Anthony thought his career not being able to box again it was the end of his world, but given the go-ahead and the green light in March, April time, he's come back. And if he can be one or two percent more dedicated, more disciplined, more focused, then he is that. And um, things happen for a reason. And every cloud has a silver lining, and all them puns. And uh, Anthony Crawler is that. His uh, attention to detail is a lot more better now. And uh, I'm really pleased with him, and this has been his best camp by far. Mm. We obviously saw uh, Kevin Mitchell fail at his attempts at trying to win the world title recently against Jorge Linares. Um, Terry Flanagan fights this week against Jose Sabida uh, for that version of the uh, world title crawlers next week. Um, you know, there was sort of a dream where <laughs> three Brits could hold, you know, three of the major titles in the lightweight division. Uh, Kevin couldn't do it. But um, what are your thoughts on Terry Flanagan uh, this week? I, I think Flanagan will do it. I do feel he's uh, got home advantage. He's a uh, big, lightweight, southpaw, busy, um, torpedo, bit of a banger. Not really for anyone of note. He's travelling. He's not made lightweight for a good while. And uh, I just feel if Terry keeps it tight early on, and I think his speed and his work output will cause torpedo problems. And I think you'll see Terry run away with the fight down the straight. Uh, I really do. Torpedo will start. Um, lacking in, in stamina with the travel and everything else and I think Terry Flanagan's got to win this and, and surprise everybody. Certainly hope so. Um, Scott Quigg uh, faces Kiko Martinez. Um, on paper, is Kiko the, the toughest Scott's had to face in his career so far, on paper? Um, no, I think um, at the stage, various stages in the career, I think Rendell Monroe was a, a huge opportunity. Obviously Rendell Monroe beat Kiko Martinez twice. Um, Kiko, age 21, not burning and done out, and Rendell had beaten him. I think Rendell was a, a huge test for Scott Quigg. Salinas was a good test. Um, I think he is a very live opponent. If you look at Box Rec or the Ring magazines, he's the next available one. After you've done those, your Santa Cruz's, um, your, your Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg, the next in line is Kiko Martinez. So that's the kid we're going to fight. I think this has got to be a, a better Kiko Martinez than the second Frampton fight. I know I'll be open for criticism for this, but if you look at the both fights, he was really up for the first fight. I think Carl had managed him in the first fight. And not only that though, when he became world champion in America, he then went to Japan, then he went. He was in Spain, in Japan, and he'd been fighting on the road, and when he turned up for the second Frampton fight, you could see he was a bit, 
he was a bit weary, a bit tired, and he'd been a busy world champion. And a bit like Pacquiao was with Mayweather, he was, there was just something not there that there was in the first fight. I do feel now Martinez has had a break, he's got an opportunity to win for a world title, uh, he's changed trainers and he's come in again full of it and uh, I think we've got a, a more dangerous Kiko Martinez in this fight than Carl had in the second fight if that makes sense. Um, as, obviously as tiring and as boring as the whole Big Frampton side recently, if Carl Frampton fights on the same night as Scott Coy, uh, what, what do you make of his opponent in America over well, in Texas? Well listen, Carl Frampton is a uh, was a one and a half million pound payday. He could have been sharing that arena in 11 days' time with Scott Quigg, giving the British public one, but it didn't happen for whatever reason. He's fighting over there in America. I wish him all the best over there and hope he wins. He's fighting an opponent, I think 55 and Boxrec, but you don't count Boxrec's ratings. There you're seeing the kid that fought Conlon at the weekend. He's, they're very capable and well schooled, and uh, the Mexicans over there. So it's in Carl Frampton. I'm sure he'll win over there and he'll win in style. And, Scott Quigg does and it just builds it to another level as well and uh, good luck to him and I hope the kid does well. If they both obviously come through their fights uh, next weekend, um, do you believe it is moving it to a different level? Or is no, I think it is moving it to a different level but I don't think that fight will happen next. I think uh, Carl then has his mandatory um, on him um, and uh, we're looking at the knee of the air fight. You should never look too far ahead. This might come back to bite me on the ass, but we do Kiko Martinez, but then the, the talk is Denaire, and I think Quick Frampton get them fights out of the way, and I think it will be what it should be now, May, due time next year, a huge blockbuster. Yeah. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since um, Liverpool, uh, Callum Smith, uh, very impressive against uh, Christopher Brass. Um, What's the plans now, uh, Callum Smith? Callum, well, uh, he's, uh, I thought it was a fantastic performance, a very mature performance, only professional two and a half years, going in with a well-schooled fighter. Um, we give George Groves plenty of problems, managed to knock him down, and Rebras pulled him into situations where Callum could have come apart, got drawn into it, but he held his composure and came on. He's had a good win, he's had a break now, and uh, Callum Smith now, listen, there's a couple of opponents uh, we want out there. We'd love to fight for the British title, that's the fight that's supposed to be happening. But we're also got to go out and watch Badu, Jack and George Groves, and we'd like to fight the loser of that fight. Obviously the winner will move on to um, have a voluntary, um, but we'd like to, if George Groves wins, we'd like to fight Badu, Jack. Um, there's Patrick Nielsen out there, there's another kid that we're looking at. Um, so there's two, three fighters out there that we're looking at that most probably to fight if the British title fight doesn't come off before the end of the year. Obviously, uh, Rocky fielding uh, an impressive victory himself over yeah, yeah. Lira. Um, is that one of the fights you're looking at as well, Joe, or not? Well, listen, the border made Rocky and Calm Smith for the British title. Calm would love to fight for the British title. He wants to fight for the British title to match the four brothers. If it's Rocky Field in the other corner, so be it. If it's Luke Blackledge, if it's Jermaine Smiler, whoever it is, but Calm Smith will fight for the British title this year. Okay. Um, any update on Paul Smith, who you spoke to him recently? Uh, yeah, Paul's just living life, chilling, enjoying family time, and. Uh, I like say he did his Sky Punzer to work and that's what I think he should stick to now but Paul's his old man, always has, always will be and the main thing is to enjoy his summer, enjoy the birth of his new child that's on the way with his missus and uh, see what happens in the new season but fighters like you see with Matthew Macklin, they're, they're always itching, they're a long time retired and I'm sure Paul's got to have a, a long and hard think over what's going to happen but as far as domestic fights, Paul Smith's done with that but then I say domestic, there's the Gale, the Groves and stuff like that but Paul now, he's, any fights for Paul, they just have to be big fights, he can't, he can't come back down fighting domestic when you've been fighting the likes of Andre Ward and Arthur Abraham. Another one of your unbeaten fighters has just been recently signed by Eddie Hearn and Matt Truman, Callum Johnson. Yeah, and Marcus so, Morrison. And Marcus Morrison. Yeah, uh, yeah. Talk about Callum Johnson first. It's, it's been a while. Uh, surprised that he hasn't signed him up before. Yeah, I, I think both kids, I, I never told them they were being signed. I, I'll let it be a surprise. And, I'm really pleased for Callum Johnson now, he's had a, a, a tough time, he's been busy six, seven fights in the last year now and he's ready to crack on for, for titles in the new season. Marcus, five, I know, four knockouts and uh, I never told him and uh, he started getting messages and notifications once the Metro Impresso came out and he phoned me and said this is true and I went yeah, yeah, it's true and he was so made up, he was so excited so uh, it's good for him and especially Marcus is in a stable there of fighters that are fighting on all levels, world, British and everything else. And, 
he's learning and soaking it up like a sponge and in two or three years time when his time come he's going to have lots of valuable experience and picking up on the, the fighters ahead of him in the gymnasium you just can't help being that environment and um, learn off it I'm really happy so yeah it's all good Scott Cardle's back in the gym he's uh, he's doing all right a pair of funny people him, him and Stephen Smith they catch me up they catch me crack me up all the time, they're so funny, it's hard to do a training session with a pair of them, they're like Abbott Costello, Lauren Hardy, the two of them, never met two funny kids, I don't know what Team GB was like with them two on it, but it must have been hilarious, but uh, it's a privilege to have the two of them in the gym, they're funny kids as well as talented fighters. Alright, Joe, listen, thanks for coming to IFL TV, enjoy your uh, Yeah, and you too, <laughs> give that diet a miss today mate and get stuck in, Hello. I recommend the sea bass and the scallops to start. Alright, no problem, Cheers, Cheers, Joe Gallagher here for IFL TV. Thank you very much. Cheers.